I think the concept of album artwork is one of the most fascinating things in the world. You're a musician, you've spent all this time pouring your life into your art, and once you finish making an album, you have to pick one still image to try and represent all that hard work, and there's not typically any going back here. Once you've made your decision, it's final. Doesn't that sound like an impossible task? I spend 20 minutes at the grocery store trying to figure out what flavor of ice cream I want, and these people have to pick one image that will go along with their music until the end of time. That's crazy. And this topic is definitely up for debate, but I would argue that whatever album artwork they end up picking is pretty important. Obviously the music is a million times more important, but there are more than a few reasons why a good album cover is much better for you in the long run than a bad album cover. It can give your listeners a better idea of where your head was at during the recording of the project. It can help shape and form the listening experience in ways that wouldn't be possible if a lesser image was chosen. It can set a tone and bring a much wanted visual into the listener's head, and remember, above all else, Please pick something that you'd want your listeners to see every time they go back to your project, forever. You know Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys? It's one of the greatest albums ever made, and that is not a hot take whatsoever. It's highly ranked whenever some publication makes a greatest albums of all time list, it's in the Library of Congress, yada yada yada, but give me an answer here. How many times have you seen this album cover outside of when you're listening to the album. It's horrible, nobody needs to see that. But then when I bring up albums like Sgt. Pepper's and Unknown Pleasures, these are images that you've seen over and over again, and they're images that you would happily see over and over again. All of these albums are great, but two of them had transcendent, brilliant artwork attached to them, and one of them did not. In this video, I'm going to talk about 12 examples of super iconic album covers and why I think they work. I'm going to break them down into three different categories, but if you really wanted to, these categories could probably overlap a little bit. This is all very subjective, and I'm just describing them in the main way that they impacted me. But let me throw a big M. Night Shyamalan twist at the end of all of this and ask you a question. What would these album covers look like if we redesigned them today? Is that even possible, and do you think that we could improve upon, or at the very least, come to a new perspective when looking at what these iconic images mean? This is where today's sponsor Fiverr comes in, and this is not like your average sponsored video that you see on YouTube. This company approached me with this super, super cool idea, and I can't wait to see what you guys think about it. So first off, we're going to talk about the category that I think is pretty easy to explain, and that's what I'm calling the thematic album cover. Basically, it's when the album is trying to convey a specific message, so the album cover works alongside the music to help further emphasize that message, and to give you a proper visualization. Nirvana's cover for Nevermind is one of the most famous photographs ever, period. But when you look at it, do you just see a baby swimming in a pool, or do you see an image with meaning behind it? Nirvana was growing in popularity before this album came out, but this is the project that sent them into superstardom. So what better way to make an entrance into the mainstream than with a representation of a vulnerable child who is being lured by money? The dollar bill is capitalism, it's the music industry, call it whatever you want, and the baby is every underground band that went on to be exploited and commercialized by major labels. Kurt Cobain specifically discussed that some of the songs on this record were about another person having power over you, and I think that's well represented on this iconic album cover. And for the next two albums, we're going to talk about two different perspectives when it comes to the American dream. This is Born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen, and Breakfast in America by Super Tramp. In the end, I think these albums are making a similar argument, but they do it in two different ways. They're both calling the American dream a lie and a sham, but one is being upfront about it, and the other a little bit more abstract. This album by Bruce Springsteen, and specifically the title track Born in the USA, is often misinterpreted by people as an American anthem of hope and freedom, and yeah. Not really. When you actually listen to the lyrics, you'll see that this is conceptually a working class man's frustrated take on what's going on in the country. It's more or less American Idiot for boomers, 
And I pretty much just said that last part so that somebody will get mad in the comments. And moving on. With Super Tramp's Breakfast in America, we get songs like Gone Hollywood, where a man comes to LA seeking fame and fortune, but he soon realizes that things are not exactly that easy. There are a few other songs on the album that poke fun at life in the States, and when we look at these two album covers, we can see the thematic ties that we eventually get in the music. Bruce is a working class man standing in front of the flag, and the Super Tramp cover satirizes New York City and the statue. Statue of Liberty as a nightmarish waitress whose surroundings are nothing but work, work, and work. And to finish off this category, we have Straight Outta Compton by N.W.A. This is a rebellious, angry album that spoke up for African American communities in South Central LA. It was a project about the harsh, violent realities of just trying to live in that area during that time. Looking at the album cover, we feel surrounded, we feel powerless, and we have a gun pointed right at us. There's no makeup, no artificial lighting, no props. This is a visualization of the harsh reality that they talk about on the record. Moving on to the next category, we have what I'm calling identity. This is when the musician's personality is projected for us on the cover. Instead of picking a specific theme that's represented in the lyrics, these covers give us background on the musicians themselves. Who are they, what are they all about, and how would they define themselves? These are examples like Prince on the iconic album cover of Purple Rain. You can take one look at this cover and you should have a pretty great idea of who this guy is. He's bold, he's fearless, he's sensual, he's intimate. The flowers on the border give us the idea that he can be gentle and vulnerable, but mostly, look what's going on in the foreground. He's a legend. He shows up and all eyes are on him. And this album artwork shows the one-of-a-kind presence of that guy right there. Elvis Presley's self-titled album is another wonderful example. He's passionate, he's confident, and he might be a little reckless, too. The pink and green letters make everything pop, and I think that the font shows a little bit of Elvis's goofy side, too. Parallel Lines by Blondie is a slightly less famous but just as important example. Here we see the dynamic of the group very clearly. The guys all blend in together, but lead singer Debbie Harris stands out. She goes against the norm, she looks defiant while everyone else is nonchalant, and when you're looking at this group, Debbie is one of a kind. And how could we talk about one of a kind without mentioning Aladdin Sane by David Bowie? When people think of one of the most unique, spectacular, beautiful, idiosyncratic musicians of all time, this is what they think of. They picture the red mullet, the lightning bolt makeup, and the singular, audacious being that was, is, and always will be David Bowie. And now we have the category that I'm calling originality. These album covers are a little bit more abstract, they're probably more aligned with a painting than a photograph, and in a way, I think they end up being a mix of our first two categories. You're a musician that wants your album cover to be different and instantly recognized recognizable. You plan on making an artistic, cultural statement, but the art itself still has to come from somewhere. Within the albums of this category, I think they take from both the thematic message of the album and the identity of the artists themselves. For example, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band by the Beatles is a grand concept album featuring the fictional Sgt. Pepper's band. Every single track is iconic in its own right, and this was a huge cultural moment in music history. To mark the importance of this release and to encapsulate the quirky personalities of the Beatles, they put together an album cover like no other. The guys were in Sgt. Pepper's cosplay, and they had dozens of the most famous people to ever walk the earth in attendance at a Sgt. Pepper's concert. Everybody from Edgar Allan Poe to Karl Marx, Albert Einstein, and Marilyn Monroe. The Velvet Underground and Nico by The Velvet Underground is another classic example of originality. The legendary banana design, which you could actually peel back on the original cover, was designed by the one and only Andy Warhol. He acted as the group's manager and paid for their recording sessions back in the day, so who better to make your album cover than one of the most famous artists of all time? I could sit here and find meaning in this banana like an English teacher, but I'll let it slide for now. Whatever the case may be, it's easily recognizable, and it seems to fit perfectly with this record. And I can say similar things about Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd and Unknown Pleasures by Joy Division. While there's no doubt that they are one-of-a-kind, abstract, and original, 
they really seem to go hand in hand with their respective albums. Whether going along thematically or whether they seem to match up with the identities of the bands, they just seem to fit perfectly. And so I've spent this whole video talking about these iconic album covers and why they work with the music that they're attached to. But now we're gonna take a look at what happens when you redesign some of the most iconic album covers of all time. So if you don't know, Fiverr is a digital platform that connects freelancers and business businesses for their digital services needs. They have this global community of freelancers that includes logo designers, copywriters, voiceover artists, web developers, musicians, editors, and so on. It's affordable, and they have a wide range of talent that is ready to fill your needs. You've probably seen the videos on YouTube where people hire Fiverr coaches for Rocket League, or Instagram gurus, musicians to help finish a song, and so on. So Fiverr basically put out this open call to their huge community of artists and said, hey, pick an iconic album cover and redesign it. Do whatever you want, just make it your own and explain to us what you did and why. They picked some of their favorites, and we're gonna talk about them right now. For the Nevermind cover, the artist wanted to elaborate on the idea of the vulnerable child being lured by money, and now we have the parent of the baby encouraging it. We see the parent proudly exploiting its child for 15 minutes of fame and seeking validation online. For the Born in the USA redesign, the artist wanted to represent America in a way that diverted from the usual tropes. They chose the national flower of a rose to represent America Americans instead of choosing one gender or race and put it on this gray headless figure. Rising above the flag, the artist wanted to symbolize America blossoming into a more diverse nation. With the Breakfast in America cover, the artist went for a more abstract, unique take on the original cover. They still included the waitress, but during research they found out that the original cover was supposed to be a bunch of Cheerios in the Grand Canyon. So boom, Cheerios in the Grand Canyon. And for Straight Outta Compton, we have this haunting look at police brutality and abuse. The artist wanted to show NWA standing up to the police, but now, just as much as ever, it seems like a very big challenge to overcome. In the identity category, we have some gorgeous redesigns of the musicians to discuss. Up first, we have a vibrant, colorful, cool, animated image of Prince driving in. In the redesign, the artist talked a lot about synesthesia and interpreting the colors of sounds, the shapes of rhythm, and the textures of the notes on the album. The Elvis redesign is a cross between Pablo Picasso and a psychedelic comic book. The rough, jagged edges bring a cool texture to the piece, and the explosion of color really makes this thing pop. The redesign for parallel lines adds some motion and a little social commentary as well. Instead of black and white, we have rainbow colors to represent the growing fluidity of today's world. And with Aladdin Sane, we have an empty podium that features the signature lightning bolt design. Bowie always drew a crowd, and we would love nothing more than to hear his voice right now. In the originality category, we can find an updated version of the Sgt. Pepper's cover. Instead of Albert Einstein and Marilyn Monroe, we've got Bernie Sanders and Beyonce. Big props to anyone who can comment everybody pictured in this one down below. For the Velvet Underground redesign, we see an animated Lego take on the iconic Andy Warhol banana design. It stays true to the simplicity of the original while adding some fun, bright colors as well. On Dark Side of the Moon, we have the cutest out of all of these redesigns. We see the classic prism, but on here, it itself is hallucinating and messing around with lights and colors. And finally, on Unknown Pleasures, we have this sick redesign with a heart and an eyeball incorporated into the original cover. You feel the music with your heart, and you see the album artwork with your eyes. Perfect. Album artwork is a special thing. It can improve our listening experience and we can get a better understanding of the musician through the images that they choose. But looking at art and being open to new ideas and new iterations of things is a wonderful way to live life. Big thank you to Fiverr for allowing me to speak on this topic, and a big shout out to all the artists for their imaginative redesigns. Comment down below with what your favorite redesign was, and thanks for watching everybody. Hey, thank you for watching that video. This was another big one and it took me forever 
Thank you to Fiverr for allowing me to speak on this topic yet again. Thank you to the artists. And if you want to support the channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media at RenshawHS. You can buy my merch, support my Patreon. And thank you again. I'll see you soon.